WSLS. This is 10 News at 5, working for you. Now at 5, a major cocaine bust spanning from New York to Southwest Virginia. This is my first experience with that much narcotics. The area here at home considered a hub for drug trafficking. Plus, improvements to a daily source of headaches for drivers. We try to avoid it as much as possible. The project in the works to ease your commute. But first tonight, we continue to monitor the crisis in Ukraine. Good evening and thank you for joining us for 10 News at 5. I'm John Carlin. I'm Brittany McGraw. As Russian troops fight their way toward Kyiv, Ukrainians are preparing for the worst. As Alice Barr reports tonight, President Joe Biden is meeting with governors and business leaders as Americans deal with sky-high gas prices. In a vivid display of the horrors of war. <laughs> Ukraine is accusing Russia of bombing a maternity and children's hospital during a ceasefire designed to let civilians escape. President Volodymyr Zelensky calling it an atrocity. It comes as Vice President Kamala Harris travels to Poland for a trip meant to show unity with allies, but complicated by a public disagreement over arming Ukraine with fighter jets. Poland wants to donate the jets, but have the U.S. deliver them in a plan U.S. officials called untenable. Departing from a U.S. NATO base in Germany to fly into airspace contested with Russia uh, over Ukraine raises some serious concerns for the entire NATO alliance. The U.S. and allies promising to keep sending weapons to Ukraine. They need things like stingers, javelins, the air defense, anti-tank. Those types of weapons are what would be most useful in this moment. Secretary of State Antony Blinken stressing he's convinced Russian President Vladimir Putin will fail, noting his increasing isolation as Western leaders step up sanctions and many of the world's biggest companies pull out of Russia. What we're uh, looking at is whether or not uh, President Putin will decide to try to finally cut uh, the losses that he's inflicted on himself. President Biden looking to cut the pain here at home as a U.S. ban on Russian oil sends soaring gas prices even higher. On Capitol Hill, close to $14 billion in defense and humanitarian aid for Ukraine working its way through Congress as part of a massive spending bill. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. The spike in gas prices impacts everyday drivers as well as delivery and rideshare services. Tonight on 10 News at 6, hear from local Uber drivers on how this is impacting business and what you should expect if you're requesting a ride. And as the war in Ukraine continues, we're working for you to follow every development and how this impacts you. Download the 10 News app or visit WSLS.com to get updates when we're not on the air. Turning now to your forecast, a rainy morning followed by a cloudy afternoon. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz joins us now. And Jeff, there is more rain on the way this weekend. There is. Saturday looks to be damper and messier than Sunday. OK, so Sunday looks to be the nicer of the two weekend days if you're already planning ahead. I want to show you how much rain fell last night into this morning. And as a general rule, we saw anywhere from about a half an inch to an inch and a half of rain. You'll notice Danville 1.39, Rocky Mount 1.14, a little bit over an inch in Floyd. You approached an inch in Galax and you had about two thirds of an inch of rain out across Lexington. Let's show you the satellite and radar composite and we're closing out the day with some breaks of sunshine. It's a little breezy, but we are drier than we were just six hours ago. This evening we are looking at variably cloudy skies or cool temperatures fall from around say the upper 40s at seven into the middle 40s by 10 and looking ahead to Thursday temperatures will start in the 30s with highs in the low to mid 50s. We're dry on Thursday, but we're going to have more clouds than sunshine in the forecast. Brittany, John. Thank you, Jeff. A Lynchburg man found guilty today for starting more than 30 trash fires last summer. 10 News reporter Tim Harfman was in the courtroom as that man faced a judge. Brennan Thornhill pleaded guilty to seven of his 13 charges. The other six were dropped as part of a plea deal. The 19 year old is charged with maliciously setting fire to wood, fence, grass, straw or similar material, 
arson and indecent exposure. Police say he set more than 30 trash fires throughout Lynchburg in June, then exposed himself to women in August. Prosecutors say Thornhill originally told police he was working as a DoorDash delivery driver at the time and wasn't responsible for the fires. GPS tracked his deliveries near some of the incidents and his gray Nissan sedan fit the vehicle description. Witnesses later identified Thornhill in a lineup and police arrested him in September. It's still unclear what the motive was in this case. Thornhill will get a mental health evaluation. Sentencing is set for July 13th. In Lynchburg, Tim Harfman, 10 News, working for you. The biggest bust of a local deputy's career. Rockbridge County deputies and federal agents found 110 pounds of cocaine in a truck. You're looking at that bust. Tonight, 10 News reporter McKinley Struthers spoke one on one with the deputy who first interacted with the suspect in an area that he learned is a hub for drug trafficking. Chips and dip with a side of coke. This is my first experience with that much narcotics. 110 pounds of coke, well, cocaine that is. We're at the front doors to the service station and uh, spoke with him there and he walked back and I, and I, I rode alongside with him just talking all the way down through. So, but you guys already had eyes on his vehicle where it was parked out here before. There were eyes on his vehicle, yes. But it was his personable nature. He assumes it got that suspect so willing to talk. He was most likely so willing to let us into the trailer because that keeps us away from where it actually is. Um, which was in the cab. And in the cab, they found all of this. A drug enforcement agency strike force used wiretapping to pinpoint where the heavy shipment was going. They called on Rockbridge County deputies to help them nab Luis Ramon de la Cruz Leonardo. Traveling from Houston to the Big Apple, prosecutors explained. He was arrested in this truck stop parking lot in Rafine back in October, ending their weeks-long investigation. A large stati statistical amount of our, our crimes are linked back to narcotics. And Interstate 81 can be a hub for drug trafficking, he says. It's easier to blend in. I wish it sent a strong message, but in all reality, that's probably a small, small drop in, in the hat for what they're moving. But at least you got this guy. At least we did. And well, and it sounds like they've made a, a, a more substantial case out of this situation. They made a federal case out of it. I spoke with special prosecutors from New York City Wednesday. They arrested his 57-year-old cousin in the Bronx, charging him with operating as a major drug trafficker. He's a big dude. Since this arrest, Deputy Wade has a new job. It's on how you, I guess, approach. He'll make you comfortable and he'll have his canine partner now, an unstoppable duo. McKinley Strother, 10 News, working for you. De La Cruz Leonardo will go before a judge in Lynchburg for a jury trial in July, according to court records. Well, the roads in Rockbridge County are finally back open after an eight vehicle deadly crash closed a part of I-81 southbound for a good part of the day today. We have been following this crash for nearly 12 hours. This is video from our crews earlier today. One person died. Several people were sent to the hospital. Drivers who travel Interstate 81 are seeing road work during their commute. VDOT leaders say the goal is to ease traffic congestion near Salem. Duke Carter tonight is live. He's in our storm chaser right along Interstate 81 in Salem. It's our special vehicle that allows uh, somebody to drive while Duke can ride in the passenger side and tell us what he's seeing. Duke? <laughs> Hey, good evening, John and Brittany. Well, yeah, we are here on mile marker uh, 1 to 31. And according to uh, VDOT leaders, the whole goal of the widening project from mile marker 137, excuse me, to 141 is part of a $2 billion package of target improvements along the corridor. So we kind of want to give you all a glimpse of what we're seeing here on the road right now. Of course, it is a beautiful day out here. Traffic is flowing as smooth as possible. But some drivers say other days that may not be the case. An accident can shut this place down and you're just stuck in hours as you all just mentioned like that rock bridge case I want to show you all some video of what we saw now according to vida they say parts of the road road does include installing a barrier wall along the narrow midsection improvements also include building about 2.6 miles of sound barrier walls along the northbound lanes and replacing a three prayer pairs of bridges again this is exits 137 to 141 now VDOT leaders conducted a corridor improvement analysis in 2018 and they learned between October 2016 and September 2019, there were 312 crashes. Take a listen to what VDOT leaders had to say. The purpose of the project is to really uh, improve uh, the, the traffic flow and, and reduce congestion, uh, make Interstate 81 more reliable. 
Now, there's also a lot of traffic averaging about 63,000 and 67 thousand of cars a daily now coming up at six o'clock we're going to be hearing from those drivers their thoughts about driving along i-81 and of course what they would like to see those improvements and of course we'll let you know all about that coming up at about six o'clock but for now the reporting live here near salem duke carter 10 news working for you coming up every minute matters when severe weather threatens we're working for you on what to keep in mind when hail and strong winds head your way Eric Johnson live here in Brooklyn for the ACC tournament. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you why the Barclays Center has become special for both Virginia and Virginia Tech. With the college basketball season winding down, it's time to start crowning those conference champions. Yes, this is when the excitement of the yeah. season goes to a whole new level. Both Virginia and Virginia Tech start their quest at the ACC men's tournament in Brooklyn. And that's where we find 10 Sports' Eric Johnson live at the Barclays Center. Eric, this is a familiar venue for both of these programs. That's exactly right. Aside from the tournament being here for the third time in the past five seasons, Virginia Tech has already played here at the Barclays Center twice in the regular season. Head coach Mike Young called it a strategic move, not only to play here, but also more neutral site games. Uh, I, I, I've always tried to go to the host city, uh, the tournament host city and play, um, you know, looking ahead. And we had that opportunity, I think, we're doing it again next year um, just for the familiarity. And Definitely. I mean, it, it's good to be able to see that before it comes down to ACC tournament time. So um, it was good for our team to be able to play in three or four games, two or three games. It, it was good for us. As for Virginia, it captured ACC title number three last time the tournament was here in 2018. They have a lot more work to do this time than they did four years ago, but the Cavs are happy to see the event move around, allowing other fans to attend, even some family members. My mom's from Queens, uh, so I've been in Brooklyn a lot. It's been a minute since I've been in New York, so it'll be good to get back there. I have a lot of family um, coming to the uh, games, so it'll be good used to be the bias oh, too many Carolina fans or Duke fans if it's in Greensboro but that was a great place and I think it's good to move it around and other fans and places the experiences get to to take it in 
Another familiar element for the Hokies and the Cavaliers will be their respective opponents tonight. Both of them having rematches of their regular season finales. We'll have more on that coming up on 10 Sports at 6. But for now, we're live in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center. Eric Johnson, 10 Sports. Still ahead, life-saving equipment in an emergency. It really helps put emergency medical services in Southwest Virginia on the map. We are working for you with the cutting edge technology, getting people treated before they enter the hospital. And you are looking at a live picture from our Virginia Tech sky cam overlooking Blacksburg and the New River Valley, a mix of clouds and sunshine as we close out our Wednesday. We'll let you know when you could see some snowflakes in the NRV coming up. Sad news tonight, the first person to receive a heart transplant from a pig has died two months after the groundbreaking experiment. David Bennett died yesterday at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctors did not give the exact cause of death, saying only that his condition had begun deteriorating several days earlier. As we've reported, the Blacksburg company Revival Corps provided the heart for the first of its kind surgery. First responders in the Roanoke Valley are testing new equipment to help save lives in the field. 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett got a firsthand look at the technology. She's working for you to explain how it could change health care in Southwest Virginia. When Botetourt County Fire and EMS get an emergency call, more often than not, it's for respiratory distress. To better diagnose and treat patients before they even get to the ER, Carillion Clinic is partnering with local first responders in the Roanoke Valley, testing out new ultrasound equipment. Botetourt Fire and EMS Chief Jason Ferguson says he's excited to be a part of this groundbreaking research. It really helps put emergency medical services in Southwest Virginia on the map. Typically, first responders use devices like this cardiac monitor to help diagnose patients who have respiratory problems. But now with this new handheld ultrasound, it gives them eyes where they never had eyes before. To be more specific and accurate in the medications that we provide or the treatments that we do give. So right now we're looking at his lungs. The device hooks up to an iPad or iPhone and can help diagnose pneumonia, lung collapses, infections, and COPD. 
Especially in Botetourt County, where a trip to the ER can take 30 to 40 minutes, seconds count. We have a huge impact on the, the success of the outcome of the patient if we know what's going on and how we can help. Dr. Carol Bernier, Carillion's EMS Fellowship Director, says more accurate treatment can shorten a patient's hospital stay. We could tailor your treatment so it would be effective and appropriate and hopefully turn you around quickly and get you home sooner. They say this is the future of emergency medicine. We're hoping that this is going to just change the face of EMS care in the Valley. And could be the new standard of care in Southwest Virginia and beyond. Lindsay Kennett, 10 News, working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Pollen levels were pretty high today and they're going to stay high again as we head into Thursday with the main three allergens or culprits being maple, ash, and juniper. So the trees right now are the culprits for uh, your uh, pollen issues. I want to show you the local view and the rain from earlier today gone. We still have a couple of clouds over uh, overhead and those clouds are going to stay pretty stubborn here for us, not only for tonight, but over the next couple of days. High pressure is going to be in pretty close proximity to us, so we're going to be dry, but we're also going to have some clouds in and out of our backyards. Tonight, variably cloudy. Tomorrow, more clouds than sunshine. Again, I stressed to you, Dry on Thursday, but partly to mostly cloudy. We're partly cloudy as we head into Thursday night. Then during the daylight hours on Friday, once again, we are looking at a partly sunny sky. A mix of clouds and sunshine here for about the next 48 hours or so. Friday may see a little more sunshine than Thursday, but both days, I stress to you, going to have clouds around every now and again. All right, let's uh, take a look and show you our next weather maker, and it's going to come into play for us here Friday night into midday Saturday. It's a cold front. And it's going to provide us a chance for not only some rain, but also some snow. So I think the general trend will be for rain showers to start, perhaps some mountain snow showers to end. So morning rain is likely on Saturday. Cold air then rushes in and may catch up to some leftover moisture in the mountains and change the moisture or the precipitation over to some snow showers before ending as we head into Saturday afternoon. So again, the Highlands, New River Valley, Mountain Empire have the best chance for a light accumulation, perhaps up to an inch or of snow before all is said and done. Then the slow pressure system exits as we head into Saturday night, and we're going to see, I think, uh, more sunshine as we head into Sunday. Now, the snow probabilities on Saturday, one inch of snow is possible, especially towards the mountains. I don't think you're going to get there towards Lynchburg and Southside. Three inches cannot 100% be ruled out above 2,500 feet towards the highest elevations of the Highlands and New River Valley, but for the most part, I think anything will be about an inch or less across the region as we head into Friday night and Saturday morning. It's breezy outside. We've had some gusts over 20, 25 miles per hour with the strongest wind gust right now in Martinsville at 22 miles per hour. Here's some good news for you. The winds tomorrow not going to play much of a role in our forecast. We're looking at winds tomorrow between three and six miles per hour. It is uh, a little bit on the uh, chilly side of things right now. Temperatures today below average 54 in Roanoke, 55 Lynchburg, 53 in Danville, low to mid 40s in the New River Valley. For tonight, partly to mostly cloudy, patchy fog will be around over overnight lows, mainly in the 30s. Danville may get close to 40. Your three day zone by zone forecast showing highs in the New River Valley in the 50s here tomorrow. Highlands, your warmest day is Friday, 62. South side, you're going to have falling temperatures as we head into the day on Saturday. For Lynchburg, dry Thursday, Friday, mainly just rain as we head Friday night into Saturday with more sunshine on Sunday in the Hill City and across the Roanoke Valley. 50s Thursday, 60s Friday, 40s this weekend, 60s as we head into next week. It is now day three of Severe Weather Awareness Week in Virginia, and we're working for you to break down why minutes matter. Today's focus is on hail and wind. Hail can cause major damage to cars, homes, and can even be deadly. When hail is on the way, be sure to move your car inside the garage. And I'm sure you've noticed lately how windy it's been. This should come as no surprise, but March is actually the windiest month of the year. As a reminder, when strong winds roll through, don't leave anything outside that's light. Weigh down things like your empty trash can. Brittany. And for more stories on severe weather awareness here at home and what you can do to be prepared, watch our 10 News 30-minute weather special, When Minutes Matter. That'll be airing tomorrow night at 5.30 right here on WSLS 10. Still ahead, protecting children in the community. How a local group continues to show support more than 20 years later.
That's right. Oh, the Berg of Pitts. That's right. As in Pittsburgh. A big fundraiser is back this weekend with an in-person event for the first time, believe it or not, two years. NRV Cares is the biggest event of the year raising money to support child abuse prevention programs in the New River Valley. Your ticket will give you a drink and appetizers, and there will also be dancing. If you can't make it out to Eastern Divide Brewing Company on Saturday, you can join the fundraiser virtually. There's a free silent auction that starts tomorrow and goes until Saturday night. And if you'd like to bid in that auction, we have a link for you on our website at WSLS.com, so you can bid virtually as well. Still ahead, investors anxiously awaiting Russia's next move. How the war in Ukraine is impacting Wall Street. That's next at 530.